A ceasefire between Armenia and Azerbaijan is due to come into effect in around three hours. It follows two weeks of intensive fighting over the disputed region of Nagorno-Karabakh. The, de the deal was announced by Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov after talks in Moscow. Selim Koshioglu reports from the city of Mingashvir in Azerbaijan. It's the first direct contact known to have taken place between Armenia and Azerbaijan since the new fighting broke out on September 27. A ceasefire has been declared from 12 o'clock on October 10th for humanitarian purposes, to exchange prisoners and the bodies of the dead. It'll be done under the guidance of the International Red Cross. The Moscow talks came after the Azerbaijan foreign minister attended talks in Geneva with the French, U.S. and Russian envoys on Thursday. We are committed to a peaceful settlement of the Karabakh conflict and are ready to resume the peace process in accordance with the recent statements of the presidents and foreign ministers of the OSCE Minsk group. But just as the talks in Moscow began, the Azerbaijan president, Ilham Aliyev, said there could be no peace if Armenia continued to insist that Nagorno-Karabakh was part of its territory. Karabakh is Azerbaijan. Everyone should know this, including those in charge of Armenia today. I tell them again that if they commit fraud after the Moscow talks, they will regret it. We will take back our lands, peacefully or through war, unequivocally. We want to organise it peacefully. We give Armenia one last chance. For the last two days, efforts to stop the fighting between Armenia and Azerbaijan have been held while the battles in and around Nagorno-Karabakh continue to rage. It still remains to be seen whether this latest international effort to achieve a ceasefire will be successful. The fighting is the worst since the 1991-94 war that killed an estimated 30,000 people and ended with a ceasefire that has been repeatedly violated. Azerbaijan says that 31 Azeri civilians had been killed and 168 wounded since September 27. It has not disclosed information about military casualties. Authorities in Nagorno-Karabakh say 376 of its military personnel and 22 civilians have been killed during the Dame period. Sinam Kusolo, Al Jazeera, Mingachev, Azerbaijan. Alexandra Sayanovich Godfoy has more on the ceasefire announcement from Moscow. It's a kind of a humanitarian ceasefire with the purpose of uh, the exchange of prisoners and other people that are detained by both sides, as well as uh, for handing over the bodies of the people that have been killed since the 27th of uh, September when this uh, conflict uh, started. This is uh, to be happening under the observation of Red Cross. He also said that the parties agreed to start substantial negotiations and he also said that the parties agreed that the format of this negotiation is not going to change, which uh, I think means that it will stay within uh, the OSC Minsk group, co-chaired by Russia, France and United States, a group that has been established in the 90s to end the original uh, conflict that has been frozen since then. So what is to follow, what is for us to see is uh, whether this ceasefire is indeed going to happen as agreed, if it is really going to uh, come down to the exchange of uh, prisoners and if the parties are really willing to start negotiating and uh, to really return uh, to the negotiating table to solve this decades-long conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh.